let's go with the agenda of looking at how it is we begin to dismantle the problem of uh, being stumped by the limit that we keep placing in our own way. As we are in this uh, series, The Big Leap, um, or Making the Leap, we are working from The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. And so really the intention behind this series is to make sure that you and I can leap beyond the self-imposed, someone say self-imposed, to make sure that you and I are equipped to leap beyond the self-imposed limitations that are getting in the way of the flow of the fulfillment of the success that God has already prepared for us. It's a heck of a thing to be praying for something God has already done. But to come to understand that the only gap between what God has done and what I am experiencing are the limitations that I have placed in my way. That's a powerful revelation. And so if we can just break the mold of the behavior and the mindset that's keeping us from our good, we can literally begin to live our best life. I don't know about you, but I am invested in living my best life. Anybody else here interested in living their best life? All right, I just wanna make sure I'm talking to the right people because everybody doesn't wanna be better. Some people are perfectly content in whatever situation they find themselves, but here is what I believe. If I can be content in the mess, I can be happy in the good. And so what is being proposed is that we have an opportunity to say yes to uh, experiencing the life that has been prepared for us. We believe that it is God's will that every individual on the face of this earth should live a healthy, happy, prosperous life. We're here to let the world know that there is a better experience. And the thing that's in the way is me. It's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing, Amen. And so what we want to do is just be able to learn how to uh, dismantle the problem because if you understand how it's working, you can, uh, you can fix it. Is that right? And so uh, for those of you who have ever taken your car to the mechanic, one of the first things that the mechanic will do is they'll begin to ask you some basic questions. As the mechanic is asking these questions, Hazel, they're trying to get some uh, preliminary sense of what the issue is, what the problem is. But after you get done talking with them, what you will probably discover is that once you're gone and they take the automobile to the back, they run a diagnostic test so that they can pinpoint the issue. Are you with me? And so what we want to be able to do as we prepare to make our big leap is we want to be able to do a personal self-diagnostic so we can pinpoint judge the issues that would keep us from making the leap into the better life. Are you with me? Are you sure you're with me? Yes. Like, yes. you sure? Yes. You rocking? Yes. You ready to go? Yes. Then make me feel you. Yes. All right. So, uh, our author suggests that there are zones in which we operate. And we move through these various zones to the degree to which um, we, in our consciousness and in our awareness, are able to move effectively and successfully in the zone. So he says there are four zones through which our activities, our life, primarily takes place. He says the first zone is the zone of incompetence. Now, if I really, really, really wanted to wake you up this morning, I would get on the organ and show you firsthand what the zone of incompetence sounds like. I would give you a crystal clear illustration of what the zone of incompetence feels like. But I don't want to shock you too bad. I don't want you having a bad opinion and impression of me. And so I'm going to ask Monte if he will take us through um, 
the zone of incompetence as it relates to someone who might be learning how to play um, a keyboard or organ. Can I have you do the organ? May I have you do the organ? So just give, give, if you'll give me the scales incompetently on the organ, what does that sound like? What does that feel like? Oh, you all are really generous. Because I didn't hear much to celebrate there. Right? It was just okay. It's just okay. When we find ourselves working in our zone of incompetence, we are working in an area where we're not really all that good. The fact of the matter is, uh, when we are working in a zone of incompetence, unless we are working at that stage as a step and level by which to move through the other zones, if we are spending excessive amounts of time working in the zone of incompetence, we are keeping ourselves from being able to experience the good life that God has designed for us. Are you with me? So we move from the zone of incompetence. Once we have gotten what we need at the base level, we move to the zone of competence. Now, each of these zones have a feel, they have a move, they have a way in which they shape and shake our lives. So let us hear, Monte, what it sounds like when we play in the zone of competence. Okay, so the zone of competence, then there's a little bit more to it. But it still doesn't stand out. When we play and work and live from the zone of competence, we're just about average. Are you with me? So then, Monte, what does it sound like when we go from the zone of competence or the zone of average now to the zone of excellence? What does the zone of excellence sound like? What does it, what does it feel like when we play there? So now, if you play in the zone of excellence, that is something special, right? If you play in the zone of excellence, people will come and watch you in the zone of excellence. People will pay you in the zone of excellence. You ever seen a good Michael Jackson or Elvis impersonator? They, they, if they were really good, if they were excellent, then that was something. Do you know their name? You know the name of the person they were impersonating, but you don't know them. So when we are in the zone of excellence, this is where Abram was just before he left his father's house, his country, and his kindred. See, in order for Abram to go from the exalted father to the father of a multitude, he could not do that under the limitation of that exists in the zone of excellence. So he had to move out of that state so that he could move into the state of genius. And once he moved into the zone of genius, he became the father of a multitude. What does it sound like, Monte, when we play in the zone of genius?
we, do we see how when we play in the zone of genius, it feels different? Do you see how it lifts the space differently? Do you see how we respond differently when we play in the zone of genius? Now, I want to point something out. He used the same keys and the same material. He had the same possibility in every zone. So what you bring with you is already more than enough, but you have to know how to move from the zone of incompetence so that you can express your genius, the genius that God has placed in you in the zone of genius. Are you with me? So one of the things that we must do as a part of our diagnostic is we have to be able to tell the zone that we're playing in. We have to be crystal clear and not illusionary about the zone that we are playing in. See, sometimes we are not tell, willing to tell ourselves the truth about the zone that we're playing in. Because people, see, sometimes people will, will clap just like in the zone of incompetence. We clap for him because we were polite. We didn't clap for him because it was good. So you have to be really, really careful about what people say to you as they see you playing in the zone. Don't take the pulse from what's being said to you. Take the pulse from the integrity of your soul because you know whether or not what you're doing is in your zone of incompetence, your zone of competence, your zone of excellence, or your zone of genius. Are you with me? So one of the first things you have to do is you have to own your potential and you have to know the zone that you are playing in. The next thing that you have to do according to uh, Gay in order to make the big leap is you have to be able to navigate the hidden barriers. I want to read something to you from, uh, from our textbook. And he, he calls it triggering the upper limits. He says, the false foundation under the upper limit problem is a set of four hidden barriers. Somebody say four hidden barriers. Four hidden. And these four hidden barriers are based on, put this in your notes, fear and false belief. It's page 43. Dropping down a couple sentences. He says the four hidden barriers all have something in common. Although they seem true and real, they are based on beliefs about ourselves that are neither true nor real. Oh, my God. He says, the fact that we unconsciously take them as true and real is the barrier that's holding us back. So then if I'm understanding this correctly, Reverend Boyd, all, each of the barriers that we're going to discuss in a second seem true and real, but they are not based in truth or reality. They are only based in my belief. So let me just unpack three terms for you. Put this in your notes. When we talk about something that is true, we're talking about that which accords itself with God as the divine principle. When we're talking about something that is true, we're saying that this thing has been, will be, and will be forevermore. When we talk about something being real, real, both true and real are synonyms for God. When we talk about something being real, we're talking about that reality that is abiding, internal, eternal, and unchangeable, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Are you with me? Now, when we talk about a belief, we're talking about something that we have accepted as true. When we talk about a belief, we're talking, to, we're talking about an accepted generalization and interpretation, put this in your notes, about our past. You've heard me say this before. If I was sitting on the airplane and an eight-year-old came out of the cockpit with a, with a pilot's suit on, I would be mortified because I do not want to put my journey in the hands of an eight-year-old pilot. I don't care how good they are. But for many of us, the eight-year-old is still piloting our souls. 
the things that we came to believe before we even had the ability to think clearly. The things we've accepted as true and real, even though they are not, they are still shaping, driving, and directing our life, world, and affairs. Are you with me? So as a part of the diagnostic, one of the things that we have to be able to do is identify the false or negative or fear-based belief, and then we have to be able to change it. The realtor accidentally drove the car off the driveway and into a ditch. When the realtor drove the car into the ditch, uh, they noticed that there was a, farmer, uh, his, a farmer's house right down the road a bit. So the realtor got out the car, went to the farmer, and asked the farmer if he would help them get the car out of the ditch. The farmer said, well, I do have a mule, but he's a little bit old. But I'll give it a try. And so the farmer went to his um, barn. He got his mules, whose name was Dusty, and he took Dusty out of the barn, and he hooked him up to the car. Now, after the farmer had Dusty hooked up to the car, he got behind old Dusty. And the farmer began to shout, pull, Billy, pull. Nothing happened. He said, pull, Roscoe, pull. Still nothing. He said, pull, Charlie, pull. Still nothing. Pull, Dusty, pull. And then... Dusty began to, began to move and he pulled the car up out the ditch. Now once they got the car out the ditch, the wife went over to the farmer and she said, Sir, thank you for getting our car out, but you did something really weird. She said, you called the name of four mules, but there was only one mule at the car. She said, well, I told you, Dusty is getting a little up in age and he's a little hard of hearing. As a matter of fact, he's gotten a little negative in his old days. And if he thought that he had to pull the car out by himself, he wouldn't have done it. But once he believed that he had a team with him, he easily did what he wouldn't have done without that belief. How many of us are refusing to pull what we can easily pull because we have our belief placed in the wrong place. So the next time you're faced with your life in the ditch, I want you to just remind yourself, pull Charlie, pull. Pull Roscoe, pull. Pull Dusty, pull. And make that thing come out because with you and God, all things. Come on. So let's take a look at these barriers because there are some hidden barriers. There are some hidden barriers that are perhaps impacting all of our belief. Now, Gay is of the opinion that all of us have uh, at least one of these hidden barriers impacting us. And can I let you in on a little secret? If it's hidden, you probably don't see it. Because I know, like, I know y'all real smart. Like, I don't see that. I don't see, I don't see that about me. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hidden. If it's hidden, you probably won't see it. See, the reason the mechanic runs the diagnostic is because the issue might not be apparent to the naked eye. Are you with me? So he says the, the, one of the first, the first hidden barrier is the barrier of feeling fundamentally flawed. The barrier of thinking and feeling and believing that there is something inherently wrong with you. Feeling fundamentally flawed can be a barrier to our ability to make our big leap. But here is what I want to uh, share with you. In spite of the things you've done, in spite of the things you said, in spite of the times you failed, in spite of the times you didn't get it right, in spite of all of the messages that, messages that you have received about what you are and what you are not, in spite of the things that were done to you that you never should have had experienced, in spite of all of that, you are not fundamentally flawed, rather you are miraculously made. See, you are not 
fundamentally flawed, the, 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 the reverse is true. There is something, as my brother Reverend McDowell would say, there is something radically right about you. But if you believe that you are broken, if you believe that you're a mistake, if you believe that there's something wrong with you, then you will move from the sense of wrongness and never come to know your wholeness. And so you have to learn how to stand in your greatness despite your past. You're not fundamentally flawed. You were just taught poorly. See, this is a beauty about a place like this. It points out the truth about you that you are made in the image and after the likeness of God. Now, I don't know about you, but whenever my mama made me wash dishes, I never had the option to say, mama, I'm not going to do that. What am I saying to you? I'm saying the way God made you is the way you are, and that's the end of the story. You are perfect, whole, and complete, even though you make mistakes. Your conversation might be flawed, but your spirit is not. Your thinking might be flawed, but your spirit is not. Your judgment might be flawed, but your identity is not. So you are not fundamentally flawed, but rather you are miraculously made. Now here is the challenge. If you think and believe you are fundamentally flawed, you will begin to do things to sabotage the manifestation of the wholeness in you. That's the power of belief. He says the second major barrier is the barrier of disloyalty and abandonment. He says when we are stuck behind the bar barrier of disloyalty and abandonment, he says our unconscious mantra might go like this. It says, I cannot expand to my full success because it would cause me to end up alone, be disloyal to my roots, and leave behind people from my past. But I like DI, the, today's DI reading. There are, some, there are some thoughts, feelings, and people who fall neatly into the category of goodbye. But here, here, is, here is what I want you to, here's what I want you to catch. Here's what I want you to catch. If you are someone who feels like you can't be honest with the people who are around you because they might leave you. See, if you feel like you can't have the confrontation or you feel like you can't uh, manage the conflict because it's going to mean that they will reject you and if you, they reject you, there is no more space for you. There is no more love for you. If you are someone who gets uncomfortable at the thought of making un pe other people uncomfortable, this barrier might be a barrier for you. And it will keep you from making your leap. Because here is what I know. Anybody who really loves you will stick around through the tough times. But you've got to be willing to stick around for yourself. You have to know how to stand up for yourself. Because people generally treat us the way they're taught to treat us. Are you with me? So then, when we have a sense of disloyalty or abandonment, it can be a barrier to our ability to make our great, great leap. Did I ever tell you I almost became a dentist? Yeah, I almost became a dentist because one of my family members would often say, like, you should become a dentist. That's an honorable profession make good money, can help people, you should become a dentist. And once I was in the, in the kitchen, having to, to prepare some chicken, and just touching the chicken <laughs> made my stomach uneasy. Then I was told to, I have to cut this part and just having to cut the part made me squeamish. Like, ugh, I don't like it. And then it dawned on me, how in the world 
are you going to put instruments and drills in somebody's mouth, a live person, <laughs> with their blood and their saliva and all of that stuff, and you can't even work with this dead chicken? <laughs> it, was right, it was right then and there that I decided being a dentist is not for me but it meant breaking with the loyalty of the person who had been recommending it to me. Are you with me? There is, a, there is a third hidden barrier that can keep us from making the big leap. This third barrier is believing that having more success brings a greater burden. Right? The, the, the belief that uh, the, the better I do, the more it takes from somebody else. But you've heard me say it before, nobody pays the price for your success. You pay the price for your success, and your success is not a debit against anyone else's account. We all live out of our own consciousness. And so the more successful you, you become, the healthier you become, the more insightful you become, the better your relationships get, you don't have to tamp down the greatness that's in you so that other people can be okay, which is the next barrier, the crime of outshining. And so when we were younger, we would sing this song and say, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. We would say, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. But there's something about sometimes the challenges of life that cause us to dim our light. There's something about wanting to be able to fit in that sometimes causes us to diminish who we are. Particularly if the people around us, maybe even our siblings, when they see that there is some greatness in us and it's not accepted. It's not acceptable. Or they see you've got some new information. You don't talk like you used to and you don't walk like you used to. There's something different about you. You're peculiar now. Once you start to show up different than what people expect you to be, that's the time for you to celebrate. Because your expectations are none of my business. See, you have to be willing to let your light shine so that men and women might see your good works. Oh, and glorify your father. So when you let it shine, it's not just the reflection that's off you, but if you really know what I'm talking about, it's the reflection off of me that can help you see your way. Are you with me? And so I want to encourage you to do a diagnostic on your hidden barriers to come to understand what might be keeping you from the very best version of yourself. And once you do this diagnostic, I want to get you to challenge the beliefs. Can I tell you how to, how to undo a belief? Real quick, real quick. How you undo a belief? In the, daily, in the, in the revealing word, it says we can undo a belief through a strict regimen of denials. Mm -hmm. Let, can I say it to you a simple way? Just start to prove what you believe wrong, right? When the belief says that you are not worthy, just pull up a time in your life when you probably didn't deserve it, but God did it anyway. When the belief says that you are not qualified, just remember some time and speak out loud about the time that you were not qualified, but the favor brought you over anyway. When, when, when the belief says to you that you are not right, the right person or the right age or the right gender, just speak into yourself and go back into your imagination and find a time where you might not have been right for that situation or you might not have been right for this situation, but just remember and say to yourself, God chooses and uses who he chooses. So it, the only thing that matters is your ability to disrupt and debunk and distract yourself from any nonsensical belief because if your belief is shaping your world, it's time to work on your beliefs. I like when Jesus is talking to the centurion. I'm going to get out of here, I promise. I'm going right now. But Jesus is talking to the centurion. And the centurion runs down his soul situation for him. 
And as Jesus is talking to the centurion, Jesus says, I'll come with you, no problem. Let's go heal, let's go heal your servant. And Jesus says, uh, the, the centurion says, uh, no, master teacher, don't come. Just speak the word, oh my goodness. Just speak the word. See, when the belief shows up, ladies and gentlemen, just speak the word. You don't need anybody to come anywhere near anywhere you are. All you have to do is for yourself know how to speak the word, but you can't speak it if you don't know it. So you got to know how to speak the word. And Jesus says to the centurion, I'll come with you. And the centurion says, no, master teacher, don't come. Just speak the word. And Jesus says to the centurion, then go your way, because I have never seen such faith be it done unto you as you believe. So the only thing I want to ask you today, Christ Universal Temple, is what beliefs are keeping you from making your big leap? God bless you.